Hello everyone. Today we're going to do PAX Research CCK1 version 7, 9.2.9. .9. PAX Research examined the ARP table. ARP stands for Address Resolution Protocol. ARP table is the table where the MAC addresses are mapped to the IP addresses. Here's the addressing table. Objectives part one, examine an ARP request. Part two, examine a switch MAC address table. Part three, examine the ARP process in remote communications. Background, this activity is optimized for viewing PDUs. The, the devices are already configured. You will gather PDU information in a simulation mode. Here's simulation mode. And answer a series of questions about the data you collect. Instructions, part one, examine an ARP request. Step one, generate ARP requests by PIN 172.16.31.3. So PIN, this computer, 31.3. And from 172.16.31.2, so from this computer, 31.2 to PIN 31.3. Okay, let's go to 31.2, desktop command prompt. And from here, they say enter ARP dash D command to clear ARP table. Okay. ARP ERP space dash D enter. The D is delete. ARP is ARP table. So delete ARP table on the computer 31.2. Next, enter simulation mode and enter command ping 172.16.31.3. Two PDUs will be generated. The ping command cannot complete the ICMP packet without knowing the MAC address of the destination. So the computer sends an ARP broadcast frame to find the MAC address of the destination. Okay, let's do here. So we need to switch to simulation mode here. Click sim simulation and then we ping 172.16.31.3. Enter, but we generated two PDUs. One is ARP, one is ICMP. The ARP here, the PDU is ARP request. ICMP is for ping, for ping. From here we see, before we ping, we delete ARP table on the computer 31.2, and the destination MAC address is on this ARP table, but we delete it. So now, without the destination MAC address, ping cannot complete the ICMP packet. That means without the destination MAC address, ICMP packet doesn't know where to go physically. Even though we know the destination IP address is 172.16.31.3, but IP address is a logic address. Any computer can be configured as the same IP address. Like here, if we change this computer to another computer and put it to here, and another computer can be configured as the same IP address. But a MAC address is different. MAC address is a physical MAC address. It is burned into the hardware of computer. So each computer has a unique MAC address. And also the communication between these two computers is NIC to NIC communication. So in order to complete the ping, the source device has to know both the destination MAC and IP address. So that's why the source device send ARP, ARP request to find the destination MAC. And later on, the ARP reply will bring back that destination MAC address and ICMP will use it to complete ping. So next, click capture forward. ARP PDU moves switch one. ICMP PDU disappears, waiting for ARP reply. Okay, let's go here, capture forward. Okay, this ARP PDU start work, but ICMP PDU disappear. That's because the ICMP PDU cannot work right now without the destination MAC address. 
So ICMP is put on hold and waiting for the ARP reply bring back that destination MAC. Okay, here, open PDU on switch. Question record to the destination MAC address. Here, the destination MAC address is here, this one. On the right side of the double greater than sign, the FFFF dot FFFF dot FFFF. This all F MAC address is a broadcast MAC address. So this destination MAC address is a broadcast destination MAC address. ARP packet, here ARP is ARP request. ARP request packet is encapsulated into this broadcast frame. So we copy this destination MAC address and paste to here. Okay, broadcast address. Is this address listed in the table above? Let's look at the table above. Okay, let me use view window split. I'm going to split this window and I can see this uh, table. And in the meantime, I can see the question as well. Okay, so the address listed. When we look at this table, we don't see this OF broadcast MAC address. All these MAC addresses displayed here are unicast MAC addresses. So the answer is no. Next, capture forward, move PDU to the next device. All right, so capture forward. Okay, the question, how many copies of the PDU did switch one make? The answer is three, one, two, three. That's because uh, the PDU with the broadcast destination MAC address. So switch one, receive this broadcast information, it will forward to all other ports. But these two devices, R1, router one, and the computer 41, uh, 4, 31.4 are not the correct destination. So they reject the um, broadcast packet. Next, what is the IP address of the device that accepted the PDU? That is the 172.16.31.3. Okay, this answer is simple. Copy paste. All right, open the PDU and examine layer two. Open this PDU on this destination device and examine layer two. Layer two is MAC address. The question is what happened to the source and destination MAC addresses? Layer two is for MAC address. So there are there are, two, there are in layers layer two and out layers layer two. In layers for information coming in, out layers for information sending out. So what currented on the destination device 31.3? Okay, 31.3. So information coming in is this device receive ARP request packet with the broadcast destination MAC address and it will process it and then this device will create an ARP reply packet and send back to the source device, the source source MAC address for source device. Here the source um, MAC, but here become the uh, destination MAC address, 1D7. That's because this ARP reply will travel in opposite direction back to the source device. So the source MAC become the destination MAC. But before the broadcast destination MAC becomes a unicast source MAC, this source MAC address corresponds to this source IP 31.3, this computer. So this source MAC address is the MAC address of this computer sending back the ARP reply. That is the answer. Okay, here source MAC becomes destination MAC. Broadcast destination MAC become unicast the source MAC of the computer sending back ARP reply. And next capture forward. Okay, let's go. And the re PDU return to 
31.2, return to 31.2. Yeah, the source device, okay, capture forward. So this uh, ARP, this is ARP, this PDU is ARP reply. Move to switch one, again, then move back to the source device 31.2. Is how many copies of the PDU did the switch make during the ARP reply? The answer is one. That's because this ARP reply PDU with the unicast destination um, MAC and the IP address, which is the address of this computer sending ARP request. Next step to examine ARP table. Okay, note that ICMP packet reappears here. ICMP packet reappears. That's because of this ARP reply bring back that destination MAC address. So now the ICMP can use this destination MAC address to complete ping. Okay, open PDU, examine MAC addresses. Open this ICMP PDU. Question. Do the MAC address of the source and destination align with their IP address? Okay, this is source MAC, 1DA7. Okay, 1DA7, source MAC corresponded to this source IP, 31.2. This is source device, correct. Destination MAC, 2849, 2849 correspond to this destination IP which is a destination device. Okay, good. The answer is yes. Uh, switch to real time, ping complete. Okay. Switch to real time. Click 31.2. Okay. So ARP dash A, ARP dash A. A is all. This command. ARP dash A is to show ARP table. The D, ARP D dash D is delete, delete ARP table. This is show ARP table. Uh, to what IP address does MAC address entry correspond? Here is a MAC address. Here's a, it's called a physical address. Physical address is a MAC address. There are different names, but have the, with the same meaning. Um, sometimes called physical address, sometimes called MAC address, sometimes called hardware address, but uh, all these names, different names with the same meaning is a MAC address. This is a MAC address correspond to this IP address. So copy paste to here, 31.3, okay. In general, when does an end device issue ARP request? Okay, look at topology. Usually when this source device doesn't know the destination MAC address, the source device will send or will issue an ARP request. That is the answer. Okay, part two. Examine a switch MAC address table. Step one, generate additional, additional traffic to populate the switch MAC address table. Okay, from 31.2 here, we're on the 31.2 to pin 31.4. Okay, we pin 31.3 already. Now they ask us to pin 31.4. I use up arrow, change three to four. Okay, uh, to populate, because in order to populate the switch MAC address table. Okay, next is uh, um, pin from 10.10.10.2, 10 10 10 pin 10.10.10.3. 10 10 10 okay, let's go 10.10.10.2, 10 10 10 desktop command prompt, and pin 10.10.10.3. 10 10 10 okay, enter, pin success. All right. So here the question, how many replies were sent and received? So there are four replies, one, two, three, four. And sent four, received four, okay. 
Here's the answer. Okay. Four replies. Seven, four, receive. Step two, examine the MAC address table on the switches. Okay, switches. There are two switches. Switch one, switch zero. Okay, so click switch one, COI, show command. Okay, switch one, COI is a command line interface. Okay, we're currently on the user executive mode. We use command enable to enter um, privilege the executive mode. And from here, we use com show command to show Mac address table. Mac address table, enter. Okay, this is the Mac address table. This is how the Mac address table look like. Question, do the entry correspond to those in the table above? Yeah, we're going to use this table again. Here's the MAC address first, 8D75 with the port F03, 8D75, F03, correct. 1D7 MAC address, F01, 1D7, F01, correct. 2849 F02. 2849 F02, okay. And 8901 G01. 8901 G01, correct. So the answer is yes. Next, um, switch zero is close. Switch zero, go to CLI and uh, enable and from here show mac address table and uh, show mac address table oh oh okay okay mac add okay mac address table now this time it's correct um, the question, do the entries correspond to those in the table above? Okay, 2501 with port G01. We okay, on the top, 2501 G01, correct. 4AB6, F02. 4AB6 is here, F02. And the 57 to b F02. 57 to b F02. Okay, these two MAC addresses are associated with the same switch port F02. Okay. Okay, answer this question here. The first question, the answer is yes. Okay. The next question is why are two MAC addresses associated with one port is this one. These two MAC addresses. Okay, let's look at these two MAC addresses, okay. These two MAC address correspond to these two IP address. These two IP addresses are for these two laptops, Tenda, Tenda, Tenda 1, uh, Tenda, Tenda, Tenda 2, and Tenda 3. And these two laptops are connected to the same switch port F02 and through this access point. Okay, this is the answer. Okay, the both uh, laptop connected to one switch port through access point. Okay. Part three, examine ARP process in remote communications. Mm, okay, step one, generate traffic to produce ARP traffic. Okay. Um, 31.2 to pin 10.10.10.1. 10 10 10 okay, let's go to here. Command prompt and P tenda 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 one. Okay. So from here we can see these two IP addresses. This is source 172. This is from 172 network. This is 10 network. So these two devices are from different network. So it's from it's it's uh, in remote communication. Okay. All right, so 
let's find the words uh, 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 1. Okay, here's a 10 dot 2, 10 dot 3, 10 dot 1. Okay, so this IP address with um, the ending number, this ending number is 1. So from here, we can tell this IP address is the default gateway IP address. That's because we usually use the first user IP address in the network as the default gateway IP address. So this IP address is default gateway IP address for the 10 network. This is a 10 network. So default gateway should be on the router zero, this interface, default gateway interface. It is also called a LAN interface because it is directly connected to the local LAN network. So it should be this interface. So this IP address is on router zero. So router zero is the destination device. All right, so let's um, do next. So ARP A, okay. You want us to show the ARP table. So ARP space dash A, this is the ARP table. What is the address of the new ARP table entry? The new entry is the first one, 31.1. 31.1 is the is a new entry. So the 30, 31.3, 31.4 are not new because we pinned already. We never pinned 31.1. Okay, from here, you can tell this IP address is another default gateway IP address because this IP address is ending with the one, the number one, one here, the first user IP address of this network. It is the default gateway IP address. Okay, let's copy paste this IP address to here. Okay, 172.16.3101. We just know this is another IP, default gateway IP address. So next, they ask us to delete ARP table. Okay, go to the delete ARP space dash D. The next simulation mode, pin again, 10.10.10.1. All right, so switch to simulation mode and pin again. I use up arrow, turn the turn the turn the one enter. So we generate two PDUs again. That, that's because we before pin we delete ARP table and the destination MAC address is on the on this ARP table. So without destination MAC address, pin cannot complete ICMP. So that's why the source device will send our request to find destination MAC address. Okay, here, the how many PDUs appear? Two, okay. And uh, click capture forward, click PDU. Mm, capture forward here. Okay, so the ARP. PD will start work, move to switch one and click open. All right, so what is the target destination IP, ad IP address of the ARP request? Here the destination IP address is 172.16.31.1. Okay, we know this IP address is the default gateway IP address on router one. Okay. All right, so next question, the destination IP is not 10.10.10.1. 10 10 10 okay, why? Because we ping from 31.2 to ping 10.10.10.1. 10 10 10 10.1 10 10 10 is on router zero. So router zero should be the destination device. But here the destination IP address is the def local default gateway IP address on router one. Why? That's because this PDU is ARP PDU. When the ARP PDU travels on the remote network and the destination device is not on the same network, the local default gateway IP address will become the destination IP. And this default gateway IP address is stored in the 
IP configuration of this source device. IP, the source device knows the default gateway IP address, but it doesn't, it still don't know the default gateway MAC address. So that's why it is sent out to the ARP request to find out the corresponding default gateway MAC address. Okay, that is a function of ARP PDU. Okay, the answer is this is an RPDU. When RPDU travels on the remote network, the receiving device is not on the same network. The local default gateway IP address will become the destination IP. The default gateway IP is stored in IPv4 configuration of the host. In the meantime, the source device will use ARP, ARP process to find the corresponding MAC address of the default gateway to complete ping. Yeah, we can go here, find 31.2 IP configuration. You see this default gateway IP address is stored here in the IP configuration of this computer. 31.2, 31.1, sorry, 31.1. All right, next step to examine the ARP table on router one. Go back to real time and router one. Okay, COI, command line interface, enable, and uh, from here we show MAC address table. We show MAC address um, table. Okay, the question, how many MAC addresses are in the table? How many? Zero, I don't see any MAC address here. That, the question is, is the answer is zero. Why? Why is zero? Okay, Th this command show MAC address table. This command usually is used on the switch, used on switch because the switch is a layer two device. Layer two is for MAC address, but a router is a layer three device. There are three devices. There, there are three is IP address. So router only usually only keep track IP address, not a MAC address. So when you use this MAC address, this show MAC address table, this command on the router that will mean something different. Will mean something totally different. So that's why you cannot see MAC address under this command. But you still can see MAC address on a router, but you have to use a different command. That is here, next step. So the answer is here. All right. So show ARP, this command. Under this command, you can see MAC address on the router. Okay, show ARP. ARP is ARP table. So ARP table, you can see the MAC address. Question, is there an entry for 172.16.31.2? Yes. The answer is yes. The next one is the last one question. Okay. What happens to the first pin in a situation where the router responds to the ARP request? I give you the answer first, then I explain you why. The answer is the first ping comes out, times out. Okay, times out. Okay, I give you an example. So from here, 31.2 to pin 10.10.10.2, you will see what I mean. Okay, 10.10.10.2. Yeah, the answer is ping. That takes a little bit longer. You can feel, you can start to feel, it takes longer time to ping. So these two devices are into different network. So first ping timed out. Okay, usually Windows ping four times, ping four times. But routers, the uh, Cisco iOS operating system will keep ping until you interrupt it. So there will be a lot of things happening. The first ping most of the time will fail because you have seen that before ping, 
it has to go through ARP process. ARP process needs minimum one time, as sometimes it may need 20 or 30 times. So by the time ARP process is done, the first pin has timed out because it takes too long to get an answer. That is why. Okay, we finish this package, sir. Let me close this, remove the split. Okay, go back to here. Okay, we finish this package, sir. Examine the ARP table. Thank you for watching my video. If you like my video, please thumbs up, subscribe my channel, uh, leave comments, and share with your friends. See you next time.